All right, gang, uh, this, uh, this video is hypothesis testing two sample means uh, the independent case, and I'm going to use uh, or uh, demonstrate uh, uh, the critical value approach. So uh, let's, let's, let's just start with the problem, uh, and let's say that we have uh, this product, and uh, let's assume that we're in some uh, uh, grocery market or grocery store. And uh, we're, we're interested to see if the sales for this product uh, uh, depends on location. So let's say that one location is at, uh, uh, in, in the produce department and one location is uh, in, in the, the area in which this particular product uh, is sold. So uh, they decide to uh, look at weekly sales. Uh, and I would say you'd probably want to, if you were going to conduct this, you'd want to do it at um, uh, two uh, very similar grocery stores. So uh, we uh, put uh, the product in location one in one grocery store. And oh, actually, uh, you could actually do this in the same grocery store now that I think about it. Uh, there'd, be, there'd be some issues, but uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. Let's just uh, let's try to keep it simple and learn how to uh, conduct these before we get into the... Uh, uh, the, the concerns. So anyway, we have location one, we have location number two, uh, and we look at the weekly sales over the next 10 weeks. So for location number one, uh, the first week they sell uh, 22 cases of that product. Uh, the next week uh, they sell 34, and then on the 10th week uh, uh, they sell 54. Uh, location number two, they sell uh, 52 the first week. Uh, 71 the second week, and then on the 10th week, uh, they sell uh, 84. So we want to see uh, the average sales from location 1, how it compares to the average sale for eternity, I guess you would say, uh, for location number 2. Specifically, we want to see if these means are equal, which is equivalent to examining whether mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. Is the difference equal to zero, which is equated to the same as saying that the two uh, population means are the same. Now, uh, I don't really know how I want to do it. I'll tell you what, uh, let me get out of this. I have, uh, I have gone to, uh, in, in Google Chrome, oh, well, I've got uh, in, in StackCrunch, I'm sorry. And I've uh, entered the data. So, um, you know, if you want, it may, may be helpful for you. I'm just going to try to make that larger. Thinking it may, well, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, pause the video, uh, go to Stack Crunch, and uh, enter in location number one these 10 measurements, and in location number two uh, these 10 measurements. So, now, we have what's called a split data set here, meaning that we've got two variables that are split into two. Uh, into Wow, that is annoying. Uh, I don't know if you guys hear that or not, but, uh, but I certainly do. Uh, but we, we, we really would rather have a stacked design. And a stacked design is the, the design of a, of a data set that you see most often in statistics. And the difference is, instead of having the measurements in columns, when you read across line one, every piece of information on, for example, line six is relevant to one particular person. Uh, this is line six. Well, that's the sixth week of one location, the sixth week of another, another location. Uh, but that uh, isn't specific to one particular measurement. So what we do in StackCrunch to be able to pull that off um, is, uh, oh gosh, I, guys, I forgot how to do this, uh, is we go to, okay, uh, we go to data, and we go to arrange, and we want to create what is called a stack data set. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the two columns, L1 and L2, and when you have a stacked data set like this, L1, uh, of course, is uh, the uh, location, and L2 is the uh, oh L2 is the second location. Now ID columns store labels in, uh, store values in, store IDs in. We can go in and uh, and, and give this uh, heading. So the values are going to be uh, our sales, 
and uh, the labels are going to be the location and store IDs in uh, ID makes sense so now if I go compute what you're actually gonna see is you're gonna see that you have two variables location and sales and when I read left to right I know that this particular measurement was a location 2 and it was 76 sales uh, in that particular week now what I would probably want to do just because I'm kind of uh, anal retentive about my data sets is I would want to go into columns and delete and I, and I want to get rid of those first two columns because I've already uh, uh, move them into a format uh, that I prefer all right so that would be the first thing that we would do is we would take our split information uh, into a stacked format uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in stack crunch all right gang now let's uh, let's go back over to the uh, where I can write and let's uh, let's think about the things we need now the test statistic is, is T and let's just assume that uh, uh, we're testing at alpha equal 0 0.05 which will be an issue here in just a second so guys what we need here is we need uh, uh, in the numerator we need uh, X bar 1 minus X bar 2 and in the uh, denominator we need to find the uh, the pooled variance And guys, remember, to get this pooled variance, what do we need? Well, we need the variance from the first sample, the variance from the second sample, the sample size. Well, the sample size is 10 in both cases. That's pretty easy. And, of course, we need uh, X bar 1 and X bar 2. Now, uh, in terms of the pooled uh, variance, uh, we, once we get all this information, you know, we're good to go. So let's go to Stack Crunch and, and let's get these. Let's get the sample mean and the sample variance. Uh, it's uh, super easy to do with technology. So I'm going to go to Stat. I'm going to go to Summary Stat. I'm going to go to Column. So I want for Sales and I want uh, the variance and I want the mean but I want to group by my location now I have to group by my location because if I just put sales up here that's going to give me the mean and, and, and sample variance of all 20 numbers I, I don't want the overall mean I want the mean according to the location so I need to group by uh, the location here so guys just hit compute um, and again with technology statistics is um, these kinds of calculations are, are super easy. So we can see that the variance for location 1 was uh, uh, 226.233. I'm going to go out to uh, four places. So I'm going to write that as 226.2333. And the variance for L2 is uh, 174. That's an easy one because it's just uh, 174, right? Uh, the mean for uh, L1 is 45.3. And the mean for L2 is 69. Now, let me tell you something. People look at that, that know squat nothing about statistics, and they'll say, well, location 2 must be better because everybody knows 69 is bigger than 45. Guys, you got to remember these are samples, and these samples vary. And I don't know if that difference between 69 and 45 is enough difference to indicate that the location population mean difference is significant, that it's truly not equal to zero. Uh, because, again, guys, think about the process. It deals with pooled variance. It deals with sample size. It deals with the individual variances of the, of the samples. Uh, there's a lot going on there other than just looking at those two measurements 69 and 45.3 so don't get impulsive and just say well everybody knows 69 is bigger than 45.3 so uh, we know we're going to reject we don't know that yet we got to let the process play its way out all right so uh let's uh let's do some stuff so uh our our test statistic is going to be um uh x bar one minus x bar two
Now our uh, and 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 guys, technically, just to be uh, just to be consistent, this is uh, minus zero because uh, in our null hypothesis, we'll set up that the difference is equal to zero is the claim. Uh, this part's going to be really easy. One over ten plus one over ten, so two over ten. And uh, the, the pooled with invariance uh, is going to be a little more challenging. So let's, um, let's go over here and actually, and we'll only do this one time. So let's calculate this. So guys, we have N1 minus 1, which is 9, uh, times the, the variance. plus N2 minus 1 times the variance over N1 plus N2 minus 2, which will be 18. Now, uh, grab a calculator. Um, I don't know if I have a calculator uh, ha handy or not. I probably don't because I forgot to... Yeah. So uh, on the on the top, I'm going to multiply. Uh, so I have nine times uh, two twenty six point two three three three, and then uh, I'm going to multiply nine times one seventy four. So guys, in the uh, in the numerator, I get uh, thirty six. 02.0997 and the way I did that uh, hopefully you guys can see that is I just uh, put that in my calculator all right so on the bottom I have uh, 20 minus 2 which is 18 so again doing that I get 200.0997 one one six six five. So I want that to go in here. All right. So let's uh, let's let's make some uh, some calculations. So on the top, I get forty five point three minus sixty nine. So I get negative twenty three point seven. Uh, and the bottom, I'm going to get. Um, I'm going to type this in, and I'll share with you what I get. So I'm going to get two hundred point one one six six five. Uh, times uh, 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 10. Now, uh, gang, uh, look, uh, look, look what I did here. So I start out, and, and some of you have uh, emailed, and, uh, and you've had some problems with things, and uh, sometimes it's just order of operations when you put this in your calculator. So that first parenthesis tells that I'm going to start everything that I want under uh, the uh, radical sign. So I take the, the pooled within variance times, and then I have 1 divided by 10. I have to put that in parentheses to make sure that the calculator uh, sees that. I can see that I already have a typo. That should be... Um, let's see... Uh, you know what? I, I, I tell you what, I can see a problem. Let, let me show you guys a little trick here. Uh, I, I think this is going uh, to be much easier for you. If we do uh, 1 divided by 10, because that's a whole lot of stuff under... I know what I'm doing, and I, and I committed... Uh, now let me see if I can pop this up for you where it's clear. All right. So I have uh, one divided by ten plus one divided by ten. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and we see this point two. Now I'm gonna take the square root 
and I'm going to take the 200.11 times the answer. And guys, I go second function. There's a key right here that says answer. And that will give me the answer from what I get in the previous command. Now, for this example, you could just type 0.2. But sometimes this isn't going to be a nice point two. It might be, you know, a, a, a decimal that goes out. To, uh, well, it, it, it could be um, uh, a repeating decimal. Uh, so you maybe want to go out four or five places. It's just as easy just to use the answer. So now if I close that up, what I've done in my, in my standard error is I've taken care of all this and uh, the pulled variance. And I've uh, got it all under the square root. So guys, when I do that, I get 6.33, let's call it. And I'm gonna use that same trick here. Uh, guys, that's supposed to be, I get uh, minus, uh, that's supposed to be a minus 23.7. So I can go uh, negative 23.7 and I can divide by the answer. Shoot, my calculator's dying on me. And I get negative uh, 3.746. All right, so that is our critical value. So what we got now to calculate the p-value is we have to see that we're dealing with a t-distribution degrees of freedom what? N1 plus N2 minus 2. And we need to find the area um, Sorry, guys. I'm uh, the uh, areas in this distribution, the points in this distribution, the critical values that separate the reject uh, uh, re region and the fail to reject region. Well, guys, that's really, really, really easy. Again, assuming alpha 0 0.05, that's really easy to do now uh, using stack crunch. If we didn't have stack crunch, it'd be insanely difficult. So guys, we can just go to stat, we can go to calculator, go to the t-distribution. And we want uh, the degrees of freedom to be 18. And we want the area below to be 0 0.025. Again, we got a two-tailed test, alpha 0 0.05. So the left rejection region is going to be half of our alpha, half of our 0.05. So the area that uh, separates that is negative 2.10, uh, let's call it. All right, so let's go back over here. So we know it's negative 2.10. Uh, you, you can calculate this using uh, stack crunch or you want, if you want, but the easiest way to see is that we have symmetry. Uh, so if our left critical value is negative 2.10, our right critical value has to be positive 2.10. Now, guys, from the previous page, we found that our T critical T stat was uh, negative 3.746. And you can see that that falls right there. Negative 3.746 falls right there. All right. Now, let's regroup. P-value approach. What happens with the P-value approach? The P-value approach, we don't use critical values, and the area that we calculate is to the left and the right of our T-critical. So guys, we saw that our, I'm sorry, not our T-critical, but our test statistic. So our test statistic was negative 
So we also have to look at 3.476. So guys, we've got to calculate that area. We've got to calculate that area. If the sum of the two areas is less than 0.05, and we know it's going to be because we've already done this using the uh, critical value approach, then uh, we have significance. So guys, uh, I would just focus on the negative 3.476. So I would uh, look at degrees of freedom uh, less than uh, negative hmm. well uh, negative uh, three point four seven six right so I want the area to the left of that and the picture shows you you know whether you're left or right by the by, by the shaded area red. Uh, and, and clearly that's what we want. We also want up here too. Uh, so that's a 0 0.00135. So it's going to be the same area over here because of symmetry. So that is going to be 0 0.00 uh, 27, which is less than 0 0.05. So just as with the cr critical value approach, uh, we use uh, the, uh, uh, well, we end up with the decision of reject H sub O. All right, gang, that's going to be it for this video. The next video I'm going to demonstrate... Uh, Uh, the confidence interval calculation for this problem. Uh, and then the final video, we'll just do all this the easy way. We'll do it in stack crunch, and you're like, holy crap. It's so much easier than p-values, calculating p-values by hand and, and test statistics and t-criticals and all that. So, But guys, I'm, uh, I, I think liberally educated people should know more than just how to punch buttons. So, uh, And, uh, you know, let's just be, be pragmatic about it here. You're my math lab, my stat lab assignment uh, requires you to calculate uh, T-criticals and test statistics and stuff like that. All right, gang, I'm done.